Okay, I think we're live. Welcome everyone to uh, this webinar where um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, community-led growth and is that the future of growth? How does it relate to product and product-led growth? Um, so I'm really excited. Um, we have some fantastic folks. Latif, you wanna, Latif and I are going to be hosting this and we're going to be passing back and forth and also to, to Bob and, and Gabriel. So maybe we can um, do a quick round of introductions and then we'll, we'll welcome people. Let's see if you want to, uh, I guess I'll start. My name is Paul Kate, one of the co-founders of Chameleon. Um, uh, Chameleon is a tool for driving product-led growth and, and helping product managers and product teams uh, it, uh, help their users use their software, build self-service. Uh, I'm really excited about community-led growth. I think I've seen some really great examples and uh, we, we're users of Crossbeam and type, type forms. So really excited to have Bob and Gabriel join us as well. But let's see if you want to do a quick intro. Absolutely. My name is Latif, co-founder and CEO of Roadmonk. We make product management software and we help our customers do their feedback ideation and roadmap management. Um, work with over 3,000 customers and it's been an exciting ride and really excited to talk about both product-led and community growth. I think if they're such hot topics today and so many companies can benefit from them in their go-to-market strategy. So excited to be here. Pass it over to Bob. Awesome. Uh, thanks everybody for having me. I'm Bob Moore. I'm the CEO and co-founder over at Crossbeam. Uh, if you don't know us, we are a platform that basically helps companies use more data when they are partnering with each other to co-sell or cross-sell. So we help answer questions like uh, how many customers do we have in common and who are they? Or are my sales reps currently trying to sell to any of the same companies as your sales reps? basically by acting like an escrow service for data. So we help you find the middle of that Venn diagram and, uh, uh, yeah, community-led growth has been a, a major part of our growth strategy uh, uh, alongside, frankly, product-led growth efforts. But, uh, you know, you can imagine based on the way our business works, there's a lot of inherent network effects that are at play in getting people to partner and collaborate inside the context of our platform and building a community to kind of bear hug that network graph has been a, a big part of how we've uh, gotten to having now almost 3,000 companies uh, that are, are on the network. That's awesome. Welcome, Bob. And Gabriel, you want to round us up? Yes. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me, uh, Gabriel. And I currently lead the community at Typhirm, and uh, which we launched this year, early this year. And uh, I've been working in communities actually for over 10 years, uh, B2C sector, uh, Telefonica, Sony, uh, Airbnb as well. And now I'm um, uh, actually focusing on, on B2B with Typeform and, and I can see a massive uh, kind of explosion of, of community interest in this in this area. So I'm really excited to to be here today. Awesome. And I, and I know we're we're in different places, um, four different places, and I'm, I'm really interested to hear where our audience is joining from. So maybe you can say hi, uh, maybe what your role is and your company and, and where you're located. Um, and it'll be cool to see kind of, I'm sure we have a bit of a global audience. I'm, I'm here in Oakland, uh, in Northern California. Um, and I think Latif, you, you're in, uh, you're in Toronto, is that right? And, uh, Bob, you're in, you're in Philadelphia. I am in Philly and I'm seeing some Philly folks in the chat here. So Philly's in the house. That's, that's great news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hi, David from Philly. Um, and yeah, and then we have someone from we have some <laughs> Spanish representation, Gabriel, and also Simon. We're about to you, Gabriel. Yeah, I'm in the I'm in the in the west coast of Spain. Uh, it's a region called Galicia. It's a uh, really nice and hilly, and it has lots of rivers and and cliffs, and and they call it the Celtic part of Spain. So uh, an interesting, so, you know, interesting uh, part of the country. But I'm I'm generally often based in in Barcelona, where that's where the type from. HQ office uh, is there's one in San Francisco, one in Barcelona. So I'm in the, um, I'm generally in Barcelona. Uh, so happy to see Simon also from from yeah. Barcelona and Gabby actually as well. Nice, yeah. And we have someone from Nigeria. That's awesome. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for the intros. Um, so let's maybe start with kind of you know why community led growth. Why now? Um, you know, we we've it's it's not a new concept. It's been around for a while. There's been the early Star Star Wars, like, you know, Salesforce and HubSpot have done a really great job at building community HubSpot with inbound.org. 
Um, of course, Salesforce is really driven by uh, the whole ecosystem of, of solutions. Um, but also a lot of recent, recently IPO tech companies, some of the examples on the right, have, have developed communities, have been driven by communities. Um, and we see as the trend is of individuals buying from under other individuals and individuals themselves as buyers, we're kind of moving away from this world where there's top-down decision-making when purchasing software, especially in B2B, to much more kind of dispersed software buying. Um, and so, you know, people are looking to buy from other people. We see the rise of influencers in B2C. So this is really a, the right time for teams to be thinking about community and what the role of individuals within their community is and how do we drive our success through that. Um, and it's a really efficient way to scale growth rather than you know, relying on inorganic or paid if you've got a strong word of mouth uh, distribution, then that really helps. And I think we're, I'm interested to hear, to know, um, for example, whether, you know, how important um, word of mouth uh, growth is at, in, the, in the companies that people have joined from. I think there's a quick poll. So um, I think, can we um, launch that? You know, is organic word of mouth growth considered important at your company? Maybe there's a poll on the right hand side. So it'd be great if you can uh, answer that. We can sense it. And, and so far it's like, okay, <laughs> it's, uh, we, we're 100%. It's, uh, and this is great. And I'm sure that's one of the reasons that you've joined this webinar. But um, clearly it is important. Uh, and, it, and I think that uh, sounds uh, uh, complete. And then, so, and then a follow-up to that, which I think we have another poll, which is, well, if it is and, you know, important, then is there a community conversation at your company? Um, so, um, you know, there's a, there's a second question here. Does your company have an active community today? Do you consider it to have an active community? And maybe we can talk about the different kinds of community. Um, so that'll be interesting. Please, yeah, please respond to that. Um, but now we'll, we'll kind of maybe move on to talking. Well, I'll, 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 I'll hand over to anyone that maybe wants to come in on the, on the panelists or Latif around. Do you agree with that community led is, is it, the time is now? Are we, where are we? Are we early in that process? What are your thoughts on that? Oh, you're on mute, Lucy. Um, it's a yesterday thing. We are companies that are, if you look at these logos, they didn't start their businesses yesterday. They started some five and 10 years ago. Uh, and the importance of it has really to do with the nature of your business, especially if you're in B2C. Um, to be able to grab that many eyeballs and attention and direct the right information and facilitate that growth um, is imperative. And when you think about some of the most successful communities that build the brands of these companies, so much of their lead gen cost is actually very limited. Whereas in the early days of a company like Salesforce, or in the early days of the big enterprise SaaS companies, so much of their money was put into marketing. And now because of communities like Discord and Slack, you're able to leverage them. And we could talk, I'm sure there's more slides ahead that I'm familiar with of how that actually happens. But um, I think people should be starting to think about what does it actually mean in their own context? And today's Carrezzo, I think, is really going to be able to be a guiding yeah, force in that regard. Maybe it'd be interesting to hear from Gabriel, like how that's changed. You know, you've been in this for a long time. Um, and do you, you know, do you agree? Like it's like people should be thinking about this now or, or is it kind of still early or, or should have been like yesterday? You already need to have community and everyone needs to have community. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think there it's. It was, I think yesterday, like yesterday, let's say like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, it was like a, a nice to, like a nice to have perhaps. I mean, that's how I remember it. Uh, when I started, it was some companies would just go down the road of community, but there wasn't a lot of kind of data or examples of how to do it well and, and so on and so forth. So there were some brave companies that kind of say, okay, let's just do this because it's cool. But uh, I think that was yesterday. I think today is a must have because of the, you know, changes in, in consumer behavior, like, you know, the, the, the concept of, you know, people want to belong today, just they just don't want to buy products. They want to, they want to, the brand to do more than just deliver a product uh, generally. And I think COVID has also played a big part as well recently in the past a year or so, where we can see that online is actually super efficient, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's what well, we've been forced to online, but actually the world can function online because 
most of the world is actually online. And I, I mean, I, would re I was reading today that in, I think it's in 2030, 100% of the world population will, will have internet access. So, so imagine, you know, how much growth we're still yet to see. So, so I think today is like, oh, you know, we are, is the right moment to start thinking about what it means to you as, as, as Latif uh, said. Uh, so I think it's a must have at the moment uh, based on the circumstances we are living and, and, and how technology is also like uh, progressing so, so fast um, and allowing communities to grow in different ways. And, and yeah, and, and more I, I've seen examples of this with well. communities around even co-selling um, and like working closely with partners from other businesses to then go to market. And I mean, Bob, maybe you can speak to that experience a little bit and, and kind of the, the need for Crossbeam as a product, but also like the, the need for communities, not just with users, but also within with partners. Yeah, I mean, I'd say what, what's interesting, actually looking at this slide at, at all these logos, I, I would agree that community is a major, major part of the, you know, everything from the brand equity of these businesses to the actual go to market strategy. But I would also bet if you went back in time and looked at, you know, their, their seed pitch decks, none of them probably have the exact phrase community led growth in there. Uh, and, and I think what's maybe happening in recent years is that there's just been a bit of pattern recognition that's kind of kicked in when you look back on a lot of the companies that have been the fastest growers over time. And you see some of these things that kind of all fit underneath this umbrella that that really is what we're talking about is community led growth here. And ultimately, it, it relates to creating dimensions of value for your customers and uh, folks that are in your pipeline, even all the way up to the discovery phase who have never engaged who are really far away from buying, but doing things that kind of allow for the existence of uh, a group of those people that have that same common interest to actually uh, create more value together than they would apart. Um, providing them with access to each other, per making it such that the outputs of that group become inputs to the way that your, your growth strategy goes. So um, yeah, partnerships is, a, is a, a perfect example of one dimension of that where you, know, you have uh, kind of community at, at multiple tiers. There's the community of people that are end consumers of your product, but there's also what uh, you know everybody in the audience's company likely has, which is their own ecosystem of other technology companies that uh, their product integrates with, and that may uh, have data flowing back and forth in between. And you know the way in which you work with those companies creates this kind of meta ecosystem effect, where if you have the same ideal customer profile but you're not a competitive product, you can actually multiply the size of the community that you can access and that you can cultivate by working really closely with those partners. And it turns out that one of the fastest and most effective ways to build community, I mean, is literally doing what we're doing here, which is we've got a webinar with, you know, a handful of uh, non-competitive brands that have a lot of common interests and, and want to speak to the same audiences. And the more and more you see of that, I think the more you'll see where you can then tap into the downstream effects of having that in place, which is actually looking at, the people that are active buyers, the people that are active customers, yeah, I like, and how to drive Which is cool. Um, and you know, you also spoke a little bit about. You said you were product led and community led. You know, maybe you want to kick us off and helping us think about what is the difference. Do you have to pick one? Um, how do you think about them both? Yeah, this is great, uh, and I'm sure there's no answer you can give here that's not going to make somebody angry in some way about the the definition being slightly off. But I think in in my mind. When I think about product like growth, I think about the way in which actual user experiences that exist within the course of using a product drive them to become more engaged or ideally to actually drive other people into the product and create these, these feedback loops or these viral growth mechanics where um, you know, the, the mere, uh, the core value proposition of what people are doing in the product is something that uh, ends up extending value out to other people, which creates these, these virtuous effects. The community led side to me is just like, you can almost draw like a bigger concentric circle around that. Like product led growth, you could argue is part of the, you know, the, the greater community led strategy, which is really just saying, how, how can we create that same effect that, that same, um, uh, you know, positive feedback loop, but do it before people are even in the product necessarily do it just by virtue of kind of, affiliating and associating and following our brand uh, and uh, make it such that education becomes lower friction, such that, you know, feeling like an insider becomes more natural. 
such that you can start developing loyalty before you're actually opening up your wallet and, and paying for a product. So I think they're related. I think you can make an argument that one sits inside of the other, um, but ultimately it's, uh, you know, it's going to be fairly rare that a company can get benefits of one and not also figure out ways Makes to sense. I mean, is that, the Do you other. have a similar perspective, Latif? Is that how you approach it with product-led? Um, I might be a little bit uh, at the risk of uh, disagreeing here, but I, I would actually, I would agree with the statement that one is a subset of the other, but I think it's the inverse relationship. So maybe this will prompt a, a wider discussion, which would be totally fine. And, and I think, you know, I, you know, happy to be wrong here, but I, I think when a company is starting out and we've all, you know, worked in startups and started startups, the, the first thing is, is always about product market fit, right? So the first thing you're actually doing, you, you could be doing elements of product like growth, which are really intrinsic to the product and, you know, chameleon as a product helps actually do some of those things. But after there is that unique experience with those first subset of users, then you're going out and finding some aspect of the flywheel um, in product like growth, in which I actually see the community as a subset of that to be able to generate the users that are coming in that. So that's part of that flywheel and community led growth reduces the friction to enable more product led growth. So I kind of see it the other way around, maybe because I, you know, when you go to that zero to one journey, it's almost always about just getting the product and then surrounding it with users to continue leveraging the growth that you want. So I kind of see it from that perspective and I look at it as, as both it can be a product or a marketing led function where you want to figure out if you want to be doing a lot of stuff synchronously or asynchronously and that can be in the form of having a, a group or a podcast or, you know, 10 other things that can be leveraged. But I do believe that I, wonder, I, I wonder if the it, statement it's a subset, but I actually think circle, of it as the inverse. This, this so diagram is right, it's a circle. You know, and, and maybe where do you begin and end it. that circle is, is, is relevant. Like maybe, you know, you begin it before product and you're kind of getting, you know, helping it use your community to drive product market fit and refinement of the product versus using the community once you've got that product market fit to then drive growth beyond that product. Would that be a, a, cat, a good <laughs> categorization to bring, bring your perspectives together? I love it. I, I also, I would say that it probably has a lot to do with like market entry and like the sequencing of how the business gets built, which, which I think is, is a lot of what you're saying there. But you know, I think in our world, we're, we're very much running what I would consider to be like a, a category creation playbook. Like we almost have to go and define what our product is and what the best practices are in how to use it before people are able to actually use it and engage with it uh, because we're, we're kind of changing the paradigm for how people use technology in a, in a certain user persona. And because of that, my bias is probably towards saying the community stuff comes first because the, the, the you know, we were writing, you know, deep thought leadership blog posts before we wrote our first line of code uh, because it, it was very much about that, that creation motion. Um, whereas I think probably for the majority of businesses, um, uh, it, it is the inverse, and I would agree, which is really differentiation is going to come from seeing evidence of that product market fit, which by by definition requires having a product there and probably is going to make you invest in product like growth mechanics first. And then, you know, the community kind of builds up around that engagement. So, yeah, it kind of goes both ways, but it may not be that every company is going through that cycle so much as like companies start at different spots in the circle based on, you know, what they're uh and, what their vision is and kind of where they're coming from yeah i love that adaptation to the definition um just to close on that so i agree i think that's actually a, uh we came to a better definition because of those different types of businesses and where you know if you don't if you're creating an entirely new category you're gonna have to do those things prior to building the product so i really appreciate that point and i think the takeaway from the audience is like you know not worrying so much about the definition, but what actually matters to the business in which order you need to actually do them because you've got a perfect example of where maybe you don't have to go build the product. You have to actually educate yeah, and that's the market a, that a good it segue needs into, it first um, while you're building you it. Know, this point, time, which so is brilliant. that, well, we, we've had user generated content for a while and that was kind of like the first versions of maybe like having great content or through you know, community content and expertise. So um, I'm kind of curious and maybe, you know, ask Gabriel on this one is, you know, what, what's different about today's communities is there anything different or is it is it evolution is it revolution what, what do you think about 
how, how those communities have, have changed. Uh, I think, well, um, to me, the, it, it, it looks very different than it, than it did like, uh, <clears throat> sorry, like uh, 10 and 20 years ago. I mean, the concept of community hasn't really changed. How community is applied to a business is, is changed massively. And it's, I mean, and I, it's interesting that we have social media here because I think social media had a, a big boom uh, in, you know, like pre like financial crisis 2008 and also during, you know, like 2010. And there was a lot of investment uh, that companies that were investing in social media heavily back in the day. That's when I started building community was in, in 2000, around 2000, 2010 at Sony. And most of the investment is actually going to social. But what I'm saying is that, and 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 this is you know obviously my my interpretation but is that social social is big and it's you know it's it, everyone is in there and it's noisy and it's it's also affected by you know politics uh, you know you name it so there's a lot of uh, distortion and noise and social and there isn't a, there isn't it's difficult to find a space where you can have meaningful Let's say, let's say, invaluable conversation with your customers, and this has led, in my view, to the micro communities that we are starting to see, where every company must have, as we were saying before, the, its own micro community, and this micro community uh, could live in different spaces. I mean, it could be a Facebook group, it could be a Slack channel, it, it could be, uh, you know, its own uh, uh, technology. Uh, uh, so. So it really depends on, on the company, but I, I think we've, we're shifting from this massive, gigantic Facebook-style social platforms to micro communities, which is which I tend to call transformational communities or communities of or meaningful communities where you can really have uh, focused uh, conversations about your company, your product, and what you're trying to achieve, and and, and get a lot of value and and they don't have to be millions of people I think this is something that I, I like to stress as well because you think of numbers how big does my community need to be and and, and there isn't really a, a, a right or wrong answer there it's just it's just about the community you need to think about what you want your community to deliver and 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 what's your mission uh, with 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 your community and a micro community, uh, which is a space without all that social media noise for you and your customers. It's just, it's just, it's just uh, the right place to to have a conversation. And I think we're seeing the rise of micro communities, uh, as opposed to, and and they are con kind of a subset of breaking, breaking right. uh, from from the social media kind of uh, uh, ecosystem as well. So there were lots of social media communities which are turning into micro communities now, moving okay. away. Uh, because of uh, the platform. So it sounds like we're moving from like always. the big broadcast uh, when it comes to like having those social media to more of these micro communities, more interactions. But there's lots of these different platforms. Um, how do you think about which platform to choose for a community if you want to establish a community? Do you have any thoughts there? Well, I mean, back in the day, but, oh, I mean, today is actually, back in the day, you didn't have a lot of options. You you had like there were like two community providers and 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 community was pretty much like a one dimensional in many ways. It was seen as I'm talking here about customer communities like you you will build your own. Uh, I think today you have a broad spectrum and it really depends on what you want to do. I mean, webinar is a great way of building community, and now you have online event platforms that have community uh, at the core of it as well so you can so I, I think it really depends on what you want to do but it's a there are lots of different choices and depending on what you want to do you can go one one way or another it also depends on your budget of course uh, but I think these days you have a lot of plug-and-play communities where you can start and and kind of uh, you know uh, uh, see where your community goes and see see where it grows but it, it really depends on what you want to do i think we're seeing also a rise in the specialized communities well before communities were a bit like a uh you know like a, 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 i wouldn't say a a a, a a a dark box but it was like a, a place where you would have all sorts of different conversations 
and if you would do like peer-to-peer -peer support you would try to do like part of development you would try to do all sorts of different things and i think today we're seeing the rise of specialized communities and a specialized community platform so as soon as yeah. you Got it. So as soon as you know what you want to do with your community, you possibly can find a product, a product right oriented now. community, which is more about discussing the product, offering support, a forum for Q&A. Uh, we can have topic oriented communities, which is like you're interested in the subject area. There's like peer experts and AMAs, etc. And then there can be profession or role oriented communities. Um, you know, like there's one I know, which is Sharebird for product marketers, where it's really topics about that hiring, etc. But I'd be curious to see if kind of Bob or Latif, especially with your slightly different angles of building community, um, if you have any thoughts on how to choose the kind of community you build, whether it's the platform or, or the objectives. Any thoughts on that? Independence Hall. His name's Alex Hillman, uh, and he's a, a really great thinker on kind of community building. And one of the distinctions that he always makes is um, he says that communities can kind of fall into one or two buckets. Buckets. You can have a community of interest, or you can have a community of practice. Uh, and it's it's similar to kind of what you just described, where you know a community of interest is people all you know join together because they all like Star Wars, right, or because they all have a, a very particular thing in common um, that they're interested in to some degree. A community of practice is where people are all actually working on something together or in the same way and learning how to become better at that thing. Um, and it, his thesis is always that communities of practice are the real communities that work. Um, and that really communities of interest can, can get very, very large, but ultimately can kind of fall victim to not being a, a, like a source of real social connection and engagement and kind of ultimately being uh, very, very wide, but not very deep. Uh, so uh, I, I think like, sorry to reframe your, your question, but I think like the, the way I usually think about it is um, how effective are we being at building a community of practice and, and what does that look like? So even if the thing that, you know, everybody shares in common is that they're, they're interested in, uh, you know, in our case, partnerships, uh, what we really care about is the fact that they're getting really good at doing partnerships and they're becoming experts in using Crossbeam and that by virtue of participating in that community, they're becoming better practitioners of the thing that, um, uh, that, that they're, they're there to learn more about and, and become more engaged with. So um, uh, maybe an incomplete answer, but I think that's, that's kind of the line that we like to draw in the sand. And when we feel like we're getting a little too much into the, hey, here's some cool news related to the industry, that's an interest piece. Uh, if we're saying, hey, here's the best practice uh, and a, a case study from somebody that's who's like really knocking it out of the park. That's a, that's a practice. Being intentional about um, creating and, and communities really, really it's more relevant that. for us to create communities of practice. Whereas I can imagine like subreddits, which are really pretty engaged, are communities of interest, but it's more organic and people have like started it and, and it kind of yeah. goes that way. But for maybe companies that are trying to get people to be successful in the jobs that they've been hired to do, the companies, the product has been hired to do, they, it's more relevant to have a community of practice. Yeah, Reddit's actually a really great, a really great example because I'd say the the subreddits that I'm in that are communities of interest. I'm one of ten million people in them, right? And the ones that I'm that are like communities of practice, I'm one of two hundred people in them. Uh, and, and I think that's it's interesting because it's not a, it's not a knock on either type, but they are very very different beasts. And I think um, I'd rather have the two hundred extremely deeply engaged like power user folks than. A yeah, million people that are also in stage of growth you know, 50 other well. uh, um, communities right. just like maybe, it with, maybe with we'll, another million we'll, folks. We'll move on because we're starting to talk about, you know, well, if we're starting to develop mm -hmm. a community, uh, you know, we, we have a responsibility towards that community. Um, and so maybe, you know, it'd be good to think about like, what, what does that involve? And um, what are the challenges in building an effective community? Um, any thoughts from I don't know, Latif or, or Gray Burrell on, on that? Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to kick off a, a few thoughts here and, and kind of dovetails in from the last question. It's, I think when thinking about a community and the responsibility of it, the first thing is, is it is in line with the brand, right? And what is the brand mission and what are you trying to contribute against that mission? And then second is, 
determining how wide and horizontal you want to start or if you want to go deep vertical because um as you can imagine getting one of practice while much more impactful can also require a lot more work to get a smaller but highly more engaged set of users so when i think about the challenges of that creating that community it's starting with where is your business and where is it at today and if you're in a company that's like 25 to 50 people, you know, you want to be able to start to build out the tentacles of interest. So people even are aware that these potential communities of practice could exist in the future. And so one of the things, as an example, we did is we looked around and said, you know, what right now has been a great form or tool in the market where people are gravitating towards? and the intersection of in our market that's not being done. And so one area that became of high interest to us, and we've now on, I think, season six is our podcast. And so we decided, okay, that the types of users that we're serving, i.e. PMs, they love async information because they're really busy people and they want the highest quality so that they can download best practices and use them as data points. And so we wanted to make sure that it was a in line with our brand and we wanted to get the top and best people we thought that could speak to specific areas of interest. So it was very topical subjects throughout the themes of the year that, you know, when they were released, but then we also had to make sure that we continue to maintain that level of um, quality of content over a period of time, because the bar always continues to get higher and higher. And so how do you maintain that brand? and then go from a practice and i love the words practice to a deeper interest community as you continue to evolve even though you get more listeners so i think you're, you're always trying to find that balance um as your goals might be to gain so much visibility but then also have a ton Just of as a community in of listeners and i know like use and you know, leverage that you're knowledge no product uh, to build, as a company uh, started as a community of email newsletter subscribers um and of course we we know there's other forms of community, but it's nice reminder that community doesn't need to look like a Facebook group or a Slack group always. It can form, you know, have you know, be in, in different formats. Um, and maybe, you know, this also segues into this, which is really some of the sim sim similar point, which is what do we want to do to build a community that's thriving? So maybe Gabriel, you know, what are your, some of your tips um, in building communities and, and attracting folks to it and empowering and engaging the, the members in that community? Right. And I think it's, it's, you know, it's linked to the previous slide. Like what's the challenge? I mean, obviously the, I think the, the main challenge, um, when you resolve it, then that's when you, 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 uh, build a thriving community. And for me, that main challenge is understanding the purpose of, of your community, because your community can do all sorts of different things. And it's almost like you build a following and, and then, the, the community wants to know what's my role here? What do we, what are we here to do? And I think that's what you have to nail because once you nail that, you then know, you know, what kind of technology is you know, suitable for you? Is it a podcast? Maybe it is. Is it like a newsletter no. or, uh, or, or is it like a, yeah, maybe you can frame that with the type form example. Like what you said as can the goal. Even the so form, understanding that the, kind of the purpose will, like Right. So I think with type firm the I think so with type firm the the for me it was it was it was actually uh, very surprising that a company like Typhoon didn't have a community. In fact, Typhoon did have a community, it just didn't have a house. And that's the way I saw it. It's like that so you have different different situations where a brand has been operating a product for seven years or eight years and it it doesn't really have a house for that community, but that community exists. So you have to go out there and attract that community and bring it home. And that was our, that was our main challenge. Where is our community? How do we bring it to to home? Like to converse with us, as opposed to different forums, Facebook groups, GitHub, you name it. We want those conversations to happen in our home. So it was pretty much about where are these people? And how do we bring it to our to our space and uh, to to our to our home to to type firm, and 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 pretty much about defining the mission. What do we want this community to do? And and 
And you don't have all the answers at the beginning. So there is always a little bit of trial and error, I have to say. But it was clear to me that the community, the type of community was serving with, with the, the main value that was going to offer was uh, our creators connecting with each other, sharing best practices, learning from each other, because we know they are the experts. Like we are not the experts, we build a product. But the creators, the people that do wonderful things with our tool are our customers. So connecting our customers together is a recipe for, for wonderful uh, uh, kind of results in terms of how they can empower each other, learn new use cases, how to integrate this, how to do that. So, so for us, it was about opening, opening the veil, like kind of unveiling the, the, the power of our, our creative community can do and let each other see their creation. So that's, that was the, 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 the kind of high level mission. And this is where we are at the moment. And, and we're seeing our community like uh, participating in webinars. We're seeing our community uh, uh, recording videos and sharing their use cases. And we're sharing that with the, with the wider community. So it sounds like so it was it's, it's about a lot community about, of practice. And uh, really to getting our community to connect with each other. That has a lot of value. Uh, and, and, and that and was what the goal value. was around. So that's, that's pretty cool that you had to, you know, we're very clear about that objective Correct. and then you can, define your platform and functionality around that. Um, Bob, any tips that you have for attracting and empowering and engaging community members? And um, I do think there are these different tiers of, uh, it's almost like within your products, if you're doing product-led growth, you'd look at like a, what you'd call like a user maturity curve. So, you know, in anybody's product, they might be different things, but you know, for us, it's a signal of like, have they added other users to the platform? Have they connected a data source? Have they connected with a partner, et cetera? You can kind of do a, a similar version of that uh, as like a, a community maturity framework. Like, you know, uh, even if it's as simple as all they do is subscribe to your newsletter list to start out with, right? It's like, okay, they subscribe, have they opened? Have they clicked the link? Uh, what's the, you know, trailing uh, several weeks worth of open rates look like? Um, you know, if there's a physical in-presence uh, community, like having the analytics on engagement and activity, I, I think allows you to then go through the process of thinking about this almost as like a series of micro funnels of getting people from one stage of maturity to the next and looking at the people that did make it and what they have in common uh, and, and what drove them there. So I do take a very, I guess, analytical approach to, uh, to the question, which maybe is a little bit less fun, but I do think at the end of the day, you're talking about uh, trying to uh, do some, some form of pattern recognition uh, on what's going on for the people that become very deeply engaged. Yeah, I really like that. Kind of the, I love the, the fact that we can apply that head of that curve um, into these other within formats. your community and it's how to pull like, the rest of that long tail. It's like a community the, market really fit. Group. Like, have you made it meet the needs of the individuals that are participating in the community? And you can kind of break it down like the funnels that you said, which is, which is really cool. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, we're, we're kind of slow on time, but it segues into the, this kind of topic, which is, you know, how do we measure yeah, success of a community? Awesome. And we're putting investment in, we're trying to build it. What, what do we think? And I'll let Gabriel talk a little bit about some metrics that he, you know, he's used in building communities. And we can have, you know, invite anyone else that wants to, to chime in as well. Right, and and this is just a, a set of metrics that I picked, but um, it's just it's just to make this more real. But I think there are two ways to there are two two main uh, things that you need to look at our community. I think one is like is the activity ratio. Like if the community, you need, you need to have a way to measure, um, you know, if people are actually interested in your community, joining your community, and doing something. And that something is could be like. Well, attending a webinar, running a webinar, or it could be actually, I don't know, write a resource that helps other, other creators, for instance. So you have to measure, you need to, to understand that. But then there are like more like business uh, uh, like type of metrics that I think are very important, which is like things like deflection score, which is traditionally what most communities have been measuring, uh, especially in the B2C space for, for years. And this is about how, how helpful your community is when it comes to helping uh, uh, your customers. And they can be very, very effective, even much faster than support. 
teams uh, at times. Um, it's a different type of support, but it's, it's nonetheless support. And then you have things like engagement score, which is something where we're now talking, this is very timely because we're talking about this at Typhoon. So we want to start looking at, is our community actually driving more uh, uh, like things like product engagement? Is helping people actually do more things with our tool, but also is our community actually uh, uh, like a, a channel that drives loyalty? And you can compare that. You can compare people that join your community and people that don't, and then you can draw comparisons. And we used to do that back in the day with Airbnb, and we could see that community members ha had a higher kind of rate of uh, uh, hosting. Tactically, that, does that mean uh, you're basically that associating user profiles the ones, within your product not in the and community if they're in the community and then sending and referral, data about their engagement yeah, yeah, in the referral. community to the same place so you can see like, okay, well, they've posted something or they've viewed something and you see that alongside product usage data. Just kind of curious how that You, you, yes, I mean you can you can see. That. I mean, right now we have the ability to do that because we build our community in a way that you can jump from our community to our to the builder, for instance, at Typhoon, and and that's like a, a kind of a, 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 a frictionless uh, flow, and we can we can see that, and we can see if our community is helping people, for instance. Uh, finish the typhoons quicker or you know remove roadblocks uh, uh, that you know they otherwise they would have to go and and and, and you know search on the web and, and whatnot or we can see if uh, if communities are actually driving more integrations because we, we are starting to track all of this so we have been being able to track data is, is massively important and we are able to when we set up the community one of the main things that I, I wanted to do and I spoke to the data team is like I want to compare com uh, product usage for community members versus non community members so we build the, the, the infrastructure to be able to do that and uh, and that's and it's it's a still work in progress and we, we it's a very early days but it, it, my hypothesis eventually what I want to prove is like if you are a type from community member you're going to stay longer and you're going to be more engaged with product than if you are not a community is an, is an engagement machine that's and cool. will will yeah, benefit that's awesome. will it's, it's really great that you're at that position where you're able to measure kind of impact we'll, the community uh, on the product make better usage. use of the product um, so, so that's like that. what anything else that anyone else wants to, to jump uh, in on in terms of to, measuring success around communities that you've had experience with if not, it's also okay because we've got <laughs> some questions to cover. Um, and I know we're, we're almost at time. Maybe we'll, we'll take one or, one or two questions. Um, I think we'll skip this one. Can you provide examples of product-led community? Because I think there's lots of examples of this. Um, you know, almost all of the, the rocket ship companies right now are, are being product-led and, and, and enabled and, and have communities. Um, but maybe this is a good one. How do you market a community pre-launch, especially if you have a small following? Maybe this is, speaks to your example, Bob, of maybe the product isn't live. And it's not quite, you know, there's no existing user base. And so, you know, how would you, how do you think about building community there? Yeah, I think one of the things uh, that we were able to do is just, you know, it's that classic Paul Graham thing, like do just do things that don't scale. Um, and very, very early on, we, latched on to anybody that we could, uh, you know, have a conversation with that seemed like they got fired up about what we were trying to do, even if it was like a discovery call about a theoretical future product, and then figured out ways to just make them into, you know, micro celebrities in our own little world, whether it was interviewing them for our blog or putting them on, you know, putting a quote on the website or finding some way to, uh, you know, make, make them build up credibility as a thought leader in this space where there wasn't a lot of thought leadership and we were trying to kind of you know create this like self-fulfilling prophecy of there being people to talk about it so i i do think that there's just a you know for the first 10 people the first 20 people that you want to have in your quote-unquote community it's okay if all of them feel like a founder of the community or like a founding member of the community like don't be shy about giving away uh you know pride uh where, where where people can feel a certain sense of ownership in it and i think the more people feel invested and they feel like 
they're maybe even responsible for some of the early growth, the more likely they are to yeah, talk about it on really LinkedIn tips, or so, tweet um, about it or, like or do things that, that might that then, um, you know, create we'll some of that more scalable this, like uh, determining activity. Best platform. And, and there was a question in the chat as well about what if you want to move platform, maybe how do you pick and, and how do you launch it? Anyone have thoughts on that? <laughs> I think it's really about understanding. Uh, because ahead. this is a hard one, actually. So, <laughs> so I was... yeah, I was going to say this is actually this is one where I don't think there's a direct answer. I think it just comes down to experimentation and understanding your user psychology. You're probably if you're thinking I'm going to start one of these groups up, you're probably thinking, okay, where do I even begin? And I mean, Facebook is, unless you're in some consumer and specific demographic segment that really speaks to that uh, area, you're probably already going to be taking Discord, Slack, or LinkedIn, but you're probably going to start each one of them up and you're going to start engaging in each one. You're actually going to see where the lift is. So um, from a mechanistic perspective, I wouldn't try to pick one and put all my marbles in there. I would actually create them in all areas and then start to engage and see where your users actually tend to live and what their their preference is so you can even just do a type form survey quite frankly and understand yeah yeah, I, I, uh, yeah it's interesting where I they want to live and that's how that's how we've approached many places but doing some research and, and i think a, the point of right you know, marketing where do people already land, live i think it's hard to create behavior change around this so if they're already the doing something you know going to them is versus like trying to force some other solution on top of them um it's, it's probably a, um, a good approach any other thoughts on this um, otherwise, uh, yeah, go ahead, go, go. Uh, uh, just, uh, just quickly, I mean, this is, a, the, the, for instance, the question that was on the, on the chat, but, but, uh, a community from Facebook to another platform, that's, that, that's very, very common. And this is to do with the social media micro community shift that we were talking about. And I think there are tools now that allow you, there, there, there are new like community tech that allow you to do that kind of migration in a smooth way, because back in the day it was very manual. But something you could do, which is quite easy, is just invite all of those. If you want to move, make the move, you make a list of all those people and you invite them to your new community. You get them excited and they will join if they want to. I think it's it's doable. So you can invite people to re-onboard people into another. Uh, but it's, 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 a about, sensitive, about that, it's a sensitive, it's a sensitive thing to do. You have to, um, do all right, last question, you have I think. to sell your um, new community so, very you know, how well. Do you, how do you uh, allocate resources best, for yeah. this? You know, you, you, you've all given examples of building community. How do you decide how many people to staff for that? How much money to invest in that? Any thoughts or guidelines or, or advice on this topic? at least this trick worked on me is talk about it as part of the product team uh where which consumes an overwhelming amount of the budgets of early stage okay, startups uh you know when, when you consider it just like an extension of the mandate that the product team is right, fulfilling well, it can it can help a lot Really just like anything else, it's if you're trying to do it as a product strategy or lead gen strategy, I think for early stage startups, you have to recognize it's part of the flywheel. And if you don't put some budget to this in marketing dollars, I tell this early story back from 2015, um, where we actually had for a period of six months, more dollars in our marketing team than engineering, which seems albeit a bit crazy, obviously that flipped for, for good after that six month period. But the reason we did it, cause it has such a long tail and it takes a lot of time. And so if you're trying to persuade an early stage set of founders, um, the, the, I like the budget one, but since everything was kind of in a single bag at the time and scale we were at, um, our marketing advisor on our board said like, this is not going to pay back for 18 to 24 months. So you're delaying something that's going to not come for 18 to 24 months in terms of value. 
you need to start on this today and get those resources in the Got door it. so right start away now, and start spend building big, out that and shaping hopefully community. get some results and immediately uh, like i it, it just line. became a no-brainer uh, but it's necessary that, that so, was really okay cool all right i think we're gonna we'll wrap up the um, thinking we had thank you for joining um if if folks have any feedback or um you know i think there's gonna be a poll um i think there's also a handout available for um a, a cheat sheet of resources available um, to to um, learn about community-led growth, but there's a quick poll. We'd love to get some feedback on, on how you you rate the webinar. Um, almost feels like a clubhouse uh, room with the way that we did it this time. Um, but yeah, just thanking everyone. Grab the the, the cheat sheet on the right hand side from, to download it. Uh, and thanks uh, to uh, Bob and Gabriel. Um, any any any, word, any final words from you, Latif, or, or anyone? Else? you want to invest in what is in the intention and the goal and uh feel free to experiment i mean just really just think in those terms and i think a lot of great things can happen yeah i was just thinking yeah the time i think the time is now uh, the there there's technology out there that we didn't have 10 years ago there's a knowledge they have community pro so i was i was i would say yeah, I think it's a it's a good it's a good a definitely a very good move and a start. Whatever you think is right, yeah, it's, it, you know, there's no one size fits all with this. Any, so and and it's good to get a, a community expert on board to help you with all these questions. I think it's difficult to, difficult to figure it out all yourself. Huge thanks for uh, the audience for coming out today yeah, and uh, learning a little more about this topic. Um, I think there's and, there's a whole lot uh, of yeah, areas we could go a whole lot deeper on, uh, but I think we've, uh, we've hit on some really important stuff here. So it's uh, been a fun conversation. So.